It's like shaking. And he's biting the tripod. <laughs> so I'm a little shaky because of this one. Yeah, so if we had some camera shakiness, that's why. Hello friends and welcome back to Kelsey and John and to a long awaited Q&A video. Yeah, so since we've moved here in Florida from New York, we've been asked plenty of questions, like a lot of questions. We have, and so we thought to commemorate the six month anniversary of us moving from New York City to the Orlando area, this will be the perfect opportunity to answer some of those questions and we had a lot of questions. Yeah, six months. It seemed like it was a month ago when we moved out. Yes, the time has gone so, so fast. So we are going to launch straight in with a little bit of context for you guys. If you are new to our channel, we moved from Manhattan, the New York City area, down to Orlando in August of 2020. We were very familiar with this area. John had spent five years living in Orlando years ago. Yeah. I spent about just, just over a year because I did the cultural program at Epcot. This is actually where we met. And so just so that you guys are aware, it was kind of a long term ambition to move back here that mm -hmm. was expedited by the events of 2020. So yeah. this is where we find ourselves. Exactly. We're happy. We've been here six months. We love it. And uh, yeah, let's get on with some questions and hopefully we can answer everything that uh, you guys have asked us. Oh yes, and that reminds me, I have left in the description box below time codes for each of the questions that we are going to ask because I feel like this is going to be a long video so if you are particularly interested in finding out the answer to a question you asked or something specific check the description and then you can skip along to that part just to make it easier for you. So like we said we had hundreds and hundreds of questions we have bucketed those into a few themes and we are going to start with work. So by far the most asked question is what do we do for work and if we stay with the same companies? So the short answer for that is I stayed with the same company when I moved. I am a corporate recruiter. I work for a creative agency based in New York. I now work remotely and do that from home. I work for a restaurant here in Orlando. So all the experience that I've had throughout my time in New York came very handy with the new position that I have here in Orlando. So I do work in a restaurant, I'm not gonna name it, but just say I'm in the industry, yeah. So on that point, we came here with one of our New York salaries. John found work when we moved down here, which is another question. How did you find the job search? So in Orlando, generally, a majority of the hospitality industry use Indeed, and that's where I was able to find my position. For the most part, because it was still in the middle of the pandemic, not a lot of restaurants were actually looking for employees. So from the time that we moved till my first day at my new location, it took about just over a month and at that time not a lot of restaurants were hiring so I was pretty lucky but now I think it's easier to find a job here a little bit easier than it was before but it took a while just really sending your application and waiting for phone calls that's what it was a waiting game so. okay next question is do you like your new job do I like my new job I definitely enjoy it a lot I enjoy the work that we do here in the restaurant. There are pros and cons when it comes to any job that you apply and I find I do find that in my current role as well. But for the most part, it has the same vibe or feel that I've had in the last few years working in New York that helped me adjust with my job here. Okay, a couple of questions related to my work are whether I still have to visit New York for my job, how I was able to move states and keep whatever job it is that I do, and how my work is going now that we are no longer in New York and I'm remote working. Right now, I don't need to visit New York. My office is still 100% remote, so everyone's kind of in the same boat. My company were very supportive of me making this move. How I was able to do that is essentially I had a conversation with my boss and pitched the idea, gave kind of all of the reasons I felt it was going to work, which was a bit of a nerve-wracking conversation, I'm not gonna lie, but 
How it came about is John and I were planning to move out of the same apartment we'd lived in for the past five years in the yes. city. It was time, our place was tiny. Yeah. If you haven't seen our New York weekly vlogs, you might want to go back and have a look to see how we were living. We were very happy there, don't get me wrong, yeah. but yeah. it was time to move, especially if I was going to be working from home for the foreseeable future. So we were thinking maybe New Jersey, New Jersey yeah, yeah, like get a little bit more space outside of the city. Then we were like, well, we have this plan for like the future, yeah. which would take us back to Florida. Why not see if that would be a possibility? So essentially it was one of those things where it's like, if you don't ask, you don't get. And then, like I said, I was very lucky that my company were very supportive of the idea and got why I wanted to make it happen. As far as just the logistics, I am again fortunate that my company is set up as an entity in the state of Florida. So it was very easy for me to transfer and be able to pay Florida taxes as well, which is a big help. Work-wise, things have been going really well since I've been remote. I've got my own space here in the apartment to be able to log on and then shut the door at the end of the day. I'm very, very busy, which is a great thing. I've been tasked with a lot of different things over the past year and things are good. So I'm very happy to be working from home. On that note, I was asked, will living in Florida be an issue for work in the future? And I certainly hope not. It was a conversation again that I had. I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't be problematic for my role and like my career development if I moved and was assured that no one felt that would be the case. So I felt very confident in my position and being able to maintain the trajectory that I'm on before we made this move and even decided for sure that it's something we wanted to do. I would say maybe the next most asked question is from my fellow people from the UK, how it's possible to work in the US. I'll preface this by saying I'm certainly not an immigration lawyer. There are a few different options to make this happen. I picked a route that I would say is one of the most challenging but can happen and that is to work for a company with global reach that is both able and willing to sponsor you to work abroad. So that is how I came to live in New York, having been in London previously. That's how I was then also able to make things work with John basically as well, because he then moved to New York with me. That is one option. The other options are you can invest in a company that will take a lot of money up front, but it's certainly an option if you have the means to do so. And the other is basically marry an American. <laughs> and that is how I've been able to sort of expand the freedoms that I have here in the US so I am now a permanent resident. So suffice to say it isn't an easy process, there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of hard decisions to make um, regardless of what entry route you take. I think be very well informed if it's something that you want to think about, particularly around the costs involved of a immigration, but also living costs, and we'll come onto that in a minute, things like healthcare, things like that. But there are ways and means if it's something that you want to do. Okay, a question for you. What company do you use to make your t-shirt website? A t-shirt website, this website. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, I do actually have a website online. It's called Lost Boys Flight. Some of the shirts that I've been wearing the last few vlogs is from the website. So if you guys want to check that out, definitely link below. I have had experience with creating websites in the past. Currently, I'm using Shopify. Shopify is a company that helps small businesses create their own websites through their platform. It's a cut paste type of program that they provide or offer. So definitely if you have a small business, I do recommend using Shopify because it's very easy. You put your effort into it, but it pays off if you really work hard yeah the and person that asked that question asked because they said how clean it looks so oh, thank you <laughs> okay were we ever bartenders we make mixed drinks so well quick answer no neither of us have been full-time bartenders in our lives we just like to drink <laughs> and we like to experiment making different cocktails we have yeah. fun with it yeah so we have worked in the hospitality industry or yeah. still am but um, we've had a lot of exposure, I guess. We have exposure. We understand drinks. We like to drink them. So sometimes going to a bar is not an option. We go creative. We get creative. <laughs> and anyone can do it. It's easy. 
Would we ever go back to being a cast member or is it better to be a visitor? What would we do for Disney if we could go back to the company? What are your thoughts on this? It's definitely something that I would entertain once everything starts to open up again. I know it's really hard to get into Disney right now just because a lot of positions are unavailable and if they are past cast members will be called in first. And rightly so. Yes, and absolutely that. But I do want to go back at some point, whether full-time or part-time, as far as what I want to do. I don't know, I'm getting better at being a people person. So something that interacts with people, whether it's staying in my industry of hospitality or trying something different, but absolutely. Disney's a great company. I would definitely go back Maybe not now, maybe in 20 years, but I will definitely come back. For me, again, I have worked for the company before. I honestly don't know if I would go back to work for them again. It would have to make sense for the career that I have now. So if I was going to work for the company, it would need to be something in corporate and it would need to be a step up from where I am at the minute. Who knows? We don't know what's in the in the future. So watch Absolutely. this space. Yeah. We love the company, so. We certainly do. So now we're gonna go move to a different location. Yes. Yeah because that wraps up the apartment bucket of questions that we received. So next up, we are going to be covering all things apartments and expenses. Okay, so we thought we'd mix things up so it's a little bit more visually interesting. So welcome to a new part of our apartment. Yay. We're now in the kitchen and we're going to start talking all things apartments and expenses. So question number one, rent or buy in Florida? My thoughts on that is it depends entirely on your own individual circumstances. We certainly weren't in a position where financially we could buy when we moved down here, but as well as that, I think we liked the fact that this was kind of a trial mm -hmm. to see how we liked living here again and how things were. We weren't super familiar with the area we moved, so it was a good opportunity to rent and see, you know, really get our bearings, see how it was. Yeah, pretty much if you don't live in Florida already, definitely rent just to get a feel for the location, the area, have an understanding of where you really want to live mm -hmm. before you buy. Right. Um, and that'll give you some time to, you know, save up you need to. And that's another question. How to determine if somewhere is a good area? What are good neighborhoods to look into? What general area do we live in? And how to go about researching apartments from another state? We live very close to Walt Disney World just behind it actually. If you're yeah. familiar with the area, you'll kind of have an idea what sort of cities we potentially live in. Again, we knew Orlando and so knew before coming down here what kind of neighborhoods would make sense for what we wanted to achieve down here. Yeah. So well, it wasn't a ton that we looked into, was there really? Well, we, we knew where we wanted to be close to. We wanted to be close to Disney. The reason we chose this area, it's because we're close to not just Disney, but other places that we felt we were going to go visit more often than mm -hmm. not. And we have friends as well. We have friends out here right. that we didn't want to be too far from them. So a lot of that came into uh, play when it came to choosing the right location. And are we happy with our location? We love our location. I couldn't imagine being yeah. anywhere else. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like this is the location that we love being in and I think that in the future when we do decide to purchase a home we will continue to stay in this same location. So we love it how we chose to do it outside of the state. Since we had an understanding of where we want to live, it's just now doing a big research uh, online. Yes, so that was a question. People wanted to know, how do we start the search? How do we find an apartment? How do we scope out the area? I think if you can, you need to visit the area first of all, just to get your bearings and kind of figure out if it's the right kind of location for you. If that's not a possibility and you want to take a risk as we did and rent sight unseen, we took quite a methodical approach in researching apartments. We used apartments.com and Google Maps to figure out what apartment complexes were available around the area and the vicinity that we wanted to be in. We then kind of just looking through the galleries, picked a, like maybe eight or nine that looked feasible within the budget that we were looking at. And we'll come on to that in a moment. And then we started ranking it by all the different amenities, the different features. And then we kind of like tallied each one, didn't we? Yeah. And the apartment complexes that came up on top were the ones that we applied to. And then it all just kind of fell into place. 
Yeah, so look at what you want in an apartment. If you can break it down to one or two, maybe three different apartment or areas before you come visit, that's gonna make your life a lot easier when you finally choose the place that you want to go to. Yeah. So. And then figure out yeah. your priorities, like what you want in an apartment, what you want from the complex and figure yeah. it out from there. So what was our budget when looking for an apartment? Was it hard to find an apartment in our budget? And what's the average rent for a two to three bedroom apartment? We did have a lot of specific questions about how much rent we pay. I don't really want to get into the super, super specifics, yes. but we set a budget for ourselves that was a lot less than what we were paying in New York City. Mm -hmm. And we said we don't want to be paying more than $1,800 per month. Yes, so our budget was below what we were paying already. So based on our monthly expense in New York, it was easier for us to find an apartment here that was within that budget. Yeah, and I think there was a lot available in that kind of range. We specifically did want a two bedroom apartment. That's maybe even a little bit above average for this sort of area. I'd say if you're looking for a two bedroom, we didn't look into three, so I can't speak well on that. But for two bedroom, you could be looking, I don't know, from like 1200 to 1800 Yeah, it depends on the location. I, I'd it really say, varies. I'd say about 1500 on the average throughout the area of Orlando. Have we found it more or less expensive compared to New York City, the difference in cost between New York and Florida apartments? Definitely much more affordable here in Florida. Significantly. Not just in housing, but the way of life from mm -hmm. restaurants to food. Taxes. Taxes to, you know, any kind of fee that you normally would pay, insurance. The only expense that added towards our living is the vehicles. Right. So we never drove. So now that we have a car, we have to spend money on that and on insurance. So that was a little bit on top, but it's one new addition to our lifestyle that yeah. we never had. The caveat to what we're saying though is unfortunately the living wage down here is significantly lower so I think it can actually be harder for people to make ends meet down here again we were very fortunate we were able to bring my salary and then John landed on his feet but I would make sure you have something lined up and make sure that it is conducive to the lifestyle you want down here because the wages are much lower salaries are lower and that's something that we definitely factored into. Like, I don't think yes. we would have made this move had I not been able to keep my job. Right now, anyway. Really, also where you're coming from. Because if, if you live in a place that has a really lower salary and you're coming out here, it might be more beneficial for you. Or at the same time, a place like this would be too expensive for you. Right. Yeah, so. yeah it's not cheap. But again, coming from New York City, it seems much more affordable. And we knew that coming into it. Cost of living compared to the UK. I will give a very short answer to this because I've lived in the US for a, quite a number of years now. So I feel like I'm probably not the most well informed. I mean, when I moved from the UK to New York, my salary essentially was doubled to reflect the cost of living in New York. New York was much more expensive in my experience than even London. And then compared to here, I'd say here was, it's kind of like for like. Like you will get more for your money in terms of house prices and going out for dinners and things like that than you would in the UK. But day to day cost of living, I'd say was probably similar. So on that note, how has having so much more space in your home made a difference? Made a lot of difference. <laughs> it feels amazing yeah. and we still kind of potter around enjoying the space that we have. I think it's made me want to spend more time at home. We do love enjoying being home more because in New York our tiny apartment made us want to leave more often. <laughs> also the lifestyle is more conducive to yeah. being out more. Yeah, you go out more all the time in New York. But here, yeah, uh, we love the space. We definitely filled up the space quickly in, too in the time that we've had but it's more of not trying to figure or question purchasing or adding something new it's just kind of 
we can make it work. Yeah, yeah, it's also nice not to have a bed six foot up in the air, which is what we had in New York because we needed the storage. So we are loving that. It yeah. also meant that we were very quickly able to become a family of three. Yeah. So you've seen our little fluffy puppy Penny running around. We've had her now going on four months. And you know we've got a great space here that we were able to welcome her into. So that has been a huge, huge perk of yeah. being down here. Yeah. Did we research schools in the area? No, <laughs> we did not. We have no immediate plans to have a larger family than we have now. So it wasn't something that factored into our decision making. However, where we have landed has fantastic schools. Yeah, one of the best schools around the area. Schools here typically are really good from what we've heard. It depends on what yeah. part of Orlando you're looking yeah. at. I think sort of Windermere is really good. I've also heard Claremont has really good schools as well. Yeah. Those are a couple that I've just read about on Facebook groups and things like that, which is another thing I recommend you do if you are considering yeah. a move to another state. You know, everyone's asking the same questions that you are, but yeah, it's just kind of a happy coincidence. Yes, exactly. Do we think Florida is our forever home? Will we buy a home here? And has the dream of owning a home gone away in Florida with the prices? The dream of owning a home in Florida has definitely not gone away. It's um, become more attainable. Yes. Again, coming from New York, our way of life has actually improved because of the way we lived prior to moving out here. Yeah, and for that, you know, we're very fortunate. But yeah. it's definitely made the dream of owning a home more attainable, for sure. Absolutely. As for whether this will be our forever home, who knows? Who knows, yeah. We fell in love with Florida because this is what we knew of that made us very happy. We love it here. We, we are very happy. But, you know, in five, ten years, who knows? We might find a new place that would make us more happy. Yeah, we're also kind of nomads. Like, I've never felt necessarily married to a place. And you're the same. I'm the same. Coming from California, moved here, moved to New York, moved back here. Yeah. And we love it here, but who knows? We might find something else. We'll go where it makes sense for us to go. But for now, it makes sense to stay here. Absolutely. So we hope we've answered all your questions around apartments and expenses. We've tried to be as honest and realistic as possible. So next up, we'll be talking all things Disney. Disney. All right, so we've moved to our bedroom now. And you know what? I'm going to leave right in the corner a link to our apartment tour if it's making you curious. <laughs> but here we find ourselves to talk all things Disney. So question number one, since moving, do we do Disney things as little or as much as we thought we would? How often are we at the parks? So it's definitely not as much as we thought we would be. Yeah. Just life gets in the way sometimes so we can't be there all the time. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a case that our schedules hardly align ever. Yeah. So it's not something that we get to do as much as we would like to. But in addition, I think we decided quite early on that we didn't want to overdo it. Yeah. So when we do go now, I still get really excited and I plan my outfits and it's like a really novel thing that we get to do even though it's just down the road. Yeah, we love Disney and we love to go there and I don't think we'll ever get sick of it because no. we don't overly do it. We don't go there every day. We... How often would you say we go? Once every... Every, as, as of late, it was maybe once every three weeks. Yeah, I would that. agree with that. Yeah, um, we want to do more. Yeah, definitely. but that's left us feeling like we're missing it and we yeah. want to go to the parks and that's a really nice feeling and something that I'm glad we've kept. So that is something that a lot of you asked is has living near Disney been just as magical as we hoped? And all I can say is it's definitely kept the magic. It's not gone away, no. but I do think it would be possible to overdo it. Yes, we visit when we want to and uh, we're definitely going to be doing a lot more of it. But for now, we're going to maintain a little bit of here and there when it comes to this thing. Yeah, yeah, I think we found it, we struck a nice balance yeah. as it stands, so it's great. Yes. So are we pass holders? What does that mean? What are the benefits? Did we have to pay for our APs outright? And are monthly payments available for Florida people? 
Yes, we are annual pass holders. Annual passes, unfortunately, aren't available to purchase right now new. Uh, we were lucky that we purchased ours in 2019, being out of state visitors to Disney, mm -hmm. and were able to renew upon moving here. Yeah. There are monthly payment options. We chose to pay for ours outright so that we didn't have the additional monthly cost because when we moved here, we weren't really sure how much we'd be paying on bills and things like that. So we were just like, pay it and get it out of the way. As far as what that means and what the benefits are, it means that we can more or less go to Disney as often as we like. Yeah. And then that also means that we have discounts on restaurants and merchandise merchandise yeah there are merchandise items that we can purchase special events much, so there's definitely a perk to it if you live in florida oh and the cost <laughs> yeah, the cost is, yeah <laughs> if you absolutely. do go regularly it saves a lot of money it does save a lot of money we purchased our pass in 2019 because we knew we were going to be there often the time that we were there during our wedding and prior to that just doing our research and booking things appointments yeah the appointments we saved a lot of money and it even rolled over to last year because with the pandemic, things got shut down for a few months and we were able to continue our pass up until the end of the year before we renewed, so. If someone's going to Walt Disney World for the first time, what would your advice be for them? Take it one step at a time. Definitely enjoy it. Don't try and do everything. Yeah. Save that for another time because it's going to be much more memorable if you enjoy little things and not rush it. Equally, I would say go with, you have to plan now. I understand that you have to do your research if you're coming from out of state, out of country and plan things ahead of time. Yeah. But also roll with the punches, especially if you have kids. I've heard the best thing to do is stick to their schedule when they've had enough. Let things go. You can always do it another time. But take advantage of the quiet moments in Disney as well, where you can relax. Like, it doesn't have to be full on all the time. Yeah. Visit the resorts, enjoy the restaurants. There is so much to do that, as John said, don't try and do it all. Yeah. But make sure you take breaks and go at a pace that suits you and your family. And what is our favorite park now we can go more often? Ooh. And has that changed? I'm just adding my own question in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think our favorite park, or at least mine, was Epcot. Was always been right and I think it's still my favorite I like it because for me it's not about the rides and it's more about enjoying the park for what it has I love going around world showcase that's my favorite part especially during a festival which is now year-round pretty much mm -hmm. so there's always a festival going on we love food we love drinks and it's more of enjoying time with the people you're with when you're there and that's why I like Epcot for what it is yeah yeah, for me, before moving down here, my favorite park changes depending on what park I'm in. It's like a running joke in my family, like everything's my favorite. I would probably say it was the Magic Kingdom because it's the classic and makes me feel so happy. As a local, I agree. Epcot is where it's at because of an evening, John and I can just pop there, like try some food items, grab some drinks and we're not feeling that pressure to get things done and go on rides, but it's still like a nice little date night. Yes. I, I really love Epcot. Yeah. And always have. <laughs> and actually that wraps up the Disney questions. So next up, we have some general moving to Florida, pros, cons, regrets, things we wish we did differently, those types of questions. We're gonna do those in quite a quick fire way from something positive to something negative or not so positive. So where should we move to now? Let's go into the office. Take me bloody this whole video to finish this cup of coffee. <laughs> She's not even moving. She's just like... <laughs> you guys. All right, so we are now in our last room in our little apartment. Yes, we are gonna get on with all things pros, cons, general moving questions. We're gonna go through this quite far. So yes. best three things and worst three things about moving to Florida. Ooh, you go first. Best, weather, Disney, and our friends. Yeah, Disney, friends, weather. I like those things. I like driving too, so it's really good. Worst, worst things about moving to Florida. Weather, <laughs> <laughs> driving. You don't like to drive. Bugs. And bugs, yes, bugs. To me, humidity is in there. 
I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Weather has definitely been very lovely. I, I can't wait for the afternoon rains. Curious about weather, I'd love to move, but scared of Florida storms. They're a very real thing. We moved right at the end of summer, so we got the tail end of the Florida storm season. They are pretty epic. We were fortunate enough that we didn't have any extreme weather that we've experienced just yet. I'm sure that will come, but it's definitely a very real reality. Storms are part of everyday life. So again, if you can visit and see if that's something that you can hack, I would recommend it because unfortunately you can't really hide from Florida stores. <laughs> yeah, it's not nothing to be scared of. We enjoy it. I find it peaceful to have a storm. Yeah. Thunderstorm, I love it. I find it amazing that one minute it'll be sunny and bright and then all of a sudden storm, cats and dogs flying everywhere. <laughs> um, <Not literally. laughs> sideways rain, thunder, lightning, and then 20 minutes later, nice clear skies. It's epic, but it takes some getting used to. I love it. <laughs> So Penny hasn't really experienced that craziness yet. No. Just one, she had one, one night, storm. She had one storm and she kind of reacted a little bit. Yeah, she didn't love it, but, but the girl's gonna have to get used to it. Yeah, but it is part of uh, living in Orlando. I love it. What's worse, Florida summers or New York winters? You know what? Florida summers, it's humid, but there's ways to get cool. Yeah. And you can be out there for short periods of time, go go to a pool, go to a lake, a river, enjoy the weather for what it is because we're near some sort of body of water. Yeah. For New York, you just bundle up, but then everything else is... Ugh. Yeah, I would pick Florida summers, I think. Ask me again in July. Yeah, we'll do another <laughs> one in the fall. Yeah. All right, so what made us want to leave New York? Should I take this one? Yeah. Honestly, we didn't want to leave New York. We loved it. We had five very, very happy years there. We would have absolutely have stayed in the general area was it not for the fact that the opportunity to move to somewhere that we'd wanted to move long term came up. Yeah. So it's more about wanting to be in Florida than it was wanting to leave New York for a variety of reasons proximity to Disney, the more like outdoor lifestyle, just a lot of the things that we love to do is right here. <laughs> it's like shit. Penny's biting oh. the tripod. <laughs> So a little shaky because of this one. Yeah, so if we had some camera shakiness, that's why. Okay, question for you. Have we thought about moving back because it wasn't what we expected? No. <laughs> we have not thought about moving back to New York. Uh, we definitely go back to visit because we love it. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, no, we love it here. Yep. What do we miss about New York? I will say my friends from New York and the food. Yeah, we have good food options here, but I mean, it's New York. It's food capital of the world as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yes, the food is amazing. Even the restaurants that we normally go to quite often, oh, I miss it. Yeah. So that's something that we will definitely do next time we get a chance to do. Food trips. Oh, and I know it's not available right now, but I will miss Broadway when that comes back oh, to yes. New York. For sure. Is it everything we expected? Are we happy? We are definitely happy. It is what we wanted from Florida. So yeah. yeah. Hardest transition or most difficult adjustment? The hardest thing about moving. I'll take this one and say the hardest thing about moving was the very act of moving itself. We were not the most organized when it came to packing. We did it all by ourselves and that was a nightmare <laughs> that we got through, but that was definitely the hardest part. Again, we've spoken about this a couple of times, but we had an idea as to what we were getting into. So nothing was a, like a shock to our system per se. The hardest transition for me has been learning how to drive, which is still a work in progress but I'll keep you posted with how that goes as time goes on. <laughs> Question for you, what is one of the biggest challenges we've had to face living in Orlando? The biggest challenge that we've had to face in Orlando? Other than finding a job, to be honest, I was, I, that's the only thing I can think of. The only yeah. challenge that I really had was to find a job at the current time. Yeah, just starting yeah. over really, like yeah. in general, was 
challenging, it but it's very challenging. But fun. life got so much easier living here that nothing really felt challenging. Yeah. Has anything surprised us? that we weren't expecting. A couple of things spring to mind. We've covered one of them, which is the frequency with which we visit Disney. That is definitely less than we expected. Also, how quickly we became puppy parents, which has been the best thing we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She makes us very happy. Yeah, that she does. Anything we would do differently? Anything we would do differently? Higher movers. Higher movers. <laughs> um, got something that's more reliable when it came to car. I love Baymax, but he broke down. That was our Jeep. Yeah, so the Jeep broke down about a month and a half, two months into us living here. Which, you know what, for what we had it for, we still saved a lot of money. Yeah, and you know what, like I say, like we should have got movers, but we did what we did because that was the most cost-effective option. So mm -hmm. doing it again, we probably would have done exactly the same. Yeah, but it was also an experience very memorable i loved it do you think you will always live in the usa me and my girls say you both look so happy where you are and again we are very very happy mm -hmm. will we always stay in the us who knows? who knows again this is the perfect location it is smack bang in the middle between both of our families john's on the west coast mine in the uk so when things are a little bit more normal we will be traveling, traveling and yeah. seeing yeah. our families as often as we can who knows we don't know what life has in store so we will see okay some general living questions <clears throat> who does most of the cooking as of lately this one believe it or not so i did do a lot of cooking but because now i work and i work in the evenings kels has started to pick up the, on the cooking we actually started doing hello fresh godsend that is a great way for kels to be able to cook and uh it's helped both of us out because now i get to come home with home cooked meal and i'm loving it i'm having a lot of fun with them <laughs> hi you are trapped right. in my arms <laughs> When does the high wear off and real life kick in? I would say for me, I was back to work within about a week. Mm -hmm. Like we got the apartment together, so it kind of made it very real very quickly. But I would say I was still waking up early just with butterflies being like, this is where we live now for a month or so. Yeah. But regardless, I still kind of feel like I'm riding that high a little bit. The weather really helps. I'm feeling really motivated to go do things. Like I'm just excited about the lifestyle that we have out here and all the things that there are to do all the time. Food items that we can't get in Florida and that we miss. Oh, good pizza, <laughs> good bagels, good pizza. <laughs> Soup dumplings. Soup dumplings. I, what I would not do for Chinatown soup dumplings. Oh, I can't. I, we've never seen, we haven't found one yet here. Yeah, the food is a big thing that we miss. Yeah. Also the availability of it as well. Oh, yeah. Like 24-7. <laughs> something we wish we knew before moving. Before moving, something we wish we knew. Yeah, so nothing that really springs to mind that we didn't know, that we wished we knew. I know the whole living wage is something that you really need to be aware of coming from a big city you will probably not make the same amount of money coming down here mm -hmm. um so you have to take that in consideration when it comes to expense but for the most part we kind of had an idea of everything that we were going to get into we did our homework we learned what we needed to know we were part of facebook groups mm -hmm. we we researched uh, we asked ourselves questions and tried to find answers for them that way we didn't have any big surprises when it came down to moving out here do we wish we moved sooner than we did no i don't think I, we wish that i think five years in new york was perfect it was the right amount to experience everything that we needed to experience and we were going to live there longer yeah but again, we got lucky and I guess you can say that we were able to leave when we did. It was the right time. Perfect time. How are we both getting on managing work and home life? I've addressed this a little bit. Work is good. I think it's tricky at the moment for us with our work schedules. Mm -hmm. They very rarely align. And that has been challenging, particularly over the holidays. John was not around a lot. Again, I'm still like finding my feet and like my friends here. So that has come with its challenges. But 
I mean, having Penny was like the best thing ever. Like she's my little bestie. Yeah, she was the best part of moving to Florida. Is traffic as bad as they say? No. Traffic from where we live isn't bad at all. Um, we do take a lot of tolls because the route that we use to get to places that we want to go to uh, require tolls. I-4 does get bad at certain times of the day. If you can avoid I-4 or that area, you'll be fine. Where we live, rarely any traffic. Yeah, so try and visit and see, yeah. get a feel for what it would be like at the sort of times that you'd be needing to travel. Do we feel safe in Florida where we are living? Is the crime high in Florida? Where we live, very safe. Yeah. Very, very safe. I think there are areas in the downtown area of Orlando that's kind of high in crime, but... Like everywhere, there yeah. are good parts and bad parts. So just be aware and do your homework. Yeah, but for the most part, Orlando in general is safe. Do you think it's a good area for a single 20-something? I think it's an excellent area for a single 20-something. There is a lot of things to do. People are very friendly. You and I both experienced being single in our 20s yeah. in Orlando yeah. and had a great time. <laughs> yeah. Have I you been say. golfing yet? Yes. Well, sort of. <laughs> um, I did purchase golf clubs with my friend and uh, we've been hitting the range. So we've been doing driving ranges uh, so far, but I haven't hit a course yet. Thoughts about moving during a pandemic? Moving during a pandemic is tough, but not impossible. It really depends on where you're going and what the rules are that you have to abide by. The, the rules were much stricter in New York, so as we drove down south, it became more lenient when it came down to the rules. Which was scary at first, to be honest, but I will say we're very fortunate that where we are in Florida, there is and remains a mask mandate throughout the entire county. So we feel very safe and life has gone on here and we are thankful for that. Yeah, we're thankful. We do keep safe, you know, we always still protect ourselves and, you know, we know of our surroundings. It's like going back to normal life just with masks. masks yeah, and, and social distancing. And distancing. Yeah, and I know what happens in Florida seems crazy to a lot of you, particularly if you're watching from the UK where it remains locked down and you know, I know things are on the up, which is great news, but it does seem insane to see what we're up to in Florida. And it was, it was a real adjustment that we were able to move because of the events of 2020 and just remain safe while we did that. Okay, this is a good one. Favorite non-Disney activity, restaurant and local shop? We love going to Mount Dora. So I love that. That's a non-Disney activity. Favorite restaurant? Um, we have gone to Hawker's recently, so we like that. It's an Asian themed restaurant, uh, themed to Asian street food. Mm -hmm. Really lovely, it's in Windermere area. Favorite local shop? I don't have one right now, but Kelsey loves a few things. So <laughs> she can answer. My them. favorite non Disney activity would be going bike riding. We recently got bikes and so have been exploring the local area that way. Restaurant, if you said Hawkers, then I'm gonna say Yellow Dog Eats. Love that place. And shop adjectives market in winter garden oh can i have another restaurant sure cafe rosalie oh yes for brunch in winter in winter garden downtown winter garden is really nice love that spot all those places by the way are puppy friendly that's one of the reasons why we love going there so. true okay i think we have maybe one more question to answer which is is florida the favorite place we have ever lived I think so. It comes down to the time of our lives where we're living. Um, mm. I love New York for what it was. I love my hometown in LA and I love Florida. So at this moment, yes, this is right now my favorite place to live. Yeah, but we don't know as we've said what the future holds. But yeah, I'm with you. We've made decisions and moves based on what made sense for us in our lives up until now. And this is just the most recent chapter. Yes, and uh, I'm happy. You're happy? I'm really happy. Penny's happy. <laughs> She's definitely happy. Yeah. So that wraps up our q and I so hope we got through all of your questions. I had a little spreadsheet 
that, that I was trying to work through. So hopefully we touched on most. If there's any additional questions, drop us a comment below and let us know your thoughts about the last six months as we've told it. Anything you were surprised by, any answers that we gave that weren't quite what you expected they would be. Let us know, we'd be very yeah. intrigued to hear your responses. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching. This has been fun. It has been fun. Hopefully we'll do another one of these. Uh, if you have more questions, we'll answer more in the comments. And we're gonna add more vlogs coming soon. I know yeah. we've calmed down a little bit. Yeah, but life's been busy. Life's been busy, but we do want to do more Disney. We want to do more adventures and we want to bring you guys along with us. So, mm -hmm. so until the next video, mm -hmm. we love you guys. Thank you so much for love watching you. and we'll see you real soon. Bye! Bye. Bye.